All right, welcome back. This is uh, part four of the video series uh, uh, Street Evangelism. Uh, I want to talk about the appearance, or actual physical appearance. Um, I know that the stereotypical opinion of street preachers, uh, that most of the country, if you ask them to describe what a street preacher is, that they uh, they would imagine a uh, person with a beard and wild hair and uh, uh, maybe almost looking like they're living in the streets and maybe holding a sign, the end is near, and shouting and acting really like a, a, a lunatic. That is probably the vision that comes to people's mind when street, the word street preacher comes up. Um, is, is that what you, you, I mean, you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, would Jesus hold these signs that these guys have? No. Would Jesus act like these guys act? No. You, you see what I'm saying, Luke? It's a misrepresentation, the, the, the signs, the things that are on the signs. Um, that's not the gospel message. Let, let me give a little testimony. About, about five years ago, when I started doing street evangelism, uh, I got affiliated somehow with people who have been doing this for 30 or 40 years and I think I was impressed with their uh, vast experience and their boldness uh, but when I first saw the signs that they were holding I mean I, I distanced myself from them because my instincts told me that this is not good uh, and, but then, but then gradually, as I got to know them better, I felt more and more comfortable until I finally was joining them. But these signs that they have, these banners and signs, uh, uh, the messages on many of them are really, really nasty, almost bordering on uh, crude and cruel sayings, insulting sayings all over their signs. Um, and derogatory statements to certain groups. It's not the gospel message. Um, it's a misrepresentation of the gospel message and a misrepresentation of God. Well, it, it took us a while, but um, eventually we realized that our, our, uh, our instincts or the Holy Spirit's promptings uh, that we, we received in the beginning when we first got involved in that, uh, we, we know that was correct in the beginning, but we, we set it aside and we, uh, we clenched Quench the spirit, I guess, and just we were able to be part of it. Uh, but eventually, we we had to come to the conclusion that uh, this is not the right thing to do. So we've we've been separating ourselves from uh, from these people and the signs. Um, also, the way that they dress. Now, first of all, let me also say that if if you had a nice big sign and it just simply said "Trust Jesus" on it, or it had some really good biblical scripture on it and you didn't have all these insulting things that they put on the signs uh, then I would say the sign would be fine except my issue now is if we had a sign like that then we become like associated with the crazy people with the sign people so uh, we're in a position where we just don't want to use signs at all uh, because we do not want to be lumped in with them because we're just like them they, they also wear the shirts and uh, we've, we've worn a lot of shirts that say trust Jesus and other things on them uh, I, I, I wouldn't even wear the shirts out there in public anymore for that same reason because I don't want to be like, uh, people to think I'm affiliated with the crazy street preachers exactly and the majority of the people are, are not doing it right in the first place so they're going to uh, affiliate you as being a part of uh, that type of street preaching mm-hmm I think that uh, what we are trying to do is uh, uh, we're, we are pretty normal people, okay? Um, and um, I, I, that's the way that we want to go out and preach. Just see how we are now? It's just like normally dressed people. Uh, we're not wearing uh, shirts. We're not carrying signs to, like, uh, you know, just draw a lot of attention. Um, and... The grooming, also. Some of these people, it seems like they're they're purposely just trying to make themselves look as wild, like a caveman. That's not part of the message. Yeah. None, none of none of the stuff you're mentioning has nothing to do 
uh, with the gospel message. It has nothing to do with 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Zero. Mm-hmm. Another thing that uh, I'll say is a, a problem with uh, this method and this, this particular group of people uh, is that uh, it's very common for them to, to go out in like large groups. And how many times have we been out there and there may be, you know, six, eight, ten, twelve of us at a time. And it's, uh, it's almost like we're creating this, um, almost like a mob scenario here. Atmosphere. Where you have a, you know, five or ten crazy looking people with these horrible insulting signs and where there are a whole bunch of them. And it's just very, very, like, intimidating to the people. Like, well, really, let's get back to the goal and objective and purpose of what we're trying to do. We want people to listen. We don't want it to be turned off and just think, I don't want to listen to that kook. We want good listeners. I mean, uh, like the Bible says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And like you said, they, they look at you like you're a kook. Mm-hmm. They look at you like you're a, a religious fanatic, a nut. Um, and uh, they just want to totally get out of the area as quick as, as they can. I mean, you got your 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 uh, thunder horn or your truth horn, whatever they call it. You know the the bullhorn. You got it as loud as it can go, and and you, you, most of the messages that you hear these guys preach, it's it's real hateful. Um, uh, you can just tell it, it's not of God. And the uh, Jesus uh, uh, sent his disciples out uh, two at a time, uh, paired them up, and you and I work together uh, and. Uh, I would not object if, if, if one or two other people came with us on rare occasions so that we can help them get some experience and, and uh, maybe coach them if they want it. Uh, but I think as a rule, uh, we, we should not have more than two or three people working together. If you get large groups, I mean, it, it just it, it gives the impression uh, that you're some kind of like a gang or a, yeah. a large cult of crazy people. Exactly, and another thing that you, that you can uh, avoid doing is uh, you got children, don't bring your children out and put them in, in, in shirts that say turn or burn or or, or, or any, any kind of shirts like that because it totally turns the people off um, to the message and they're going to tell you um, why are these little kids dressed in, in, in these shirts? Um, and, and they're going to be questioning you, and, and it's just a stumbling block. It's an offense to the people um, um, uh, to have the little kids there and have the little kids preaching, even as a, an offense um, to the people. So, yeah. I'm not going to name names, but uh, I, I, I know quite a few of these street preachers that they, they seem like they are purposely trying to make themselves as radical, extreme looking. And sounding as they possibly can, and I'm not sure the psychology behind all of that, as far as what they're really thinking, because I can't read their mind. But I know it's not the right atmosphere and the right way to present yourself, the right appearance we want to to have as yeah. as ambassadors for Christ. Exactly. I've seen some real bad stuff out in the streets. I've seen preachers. They're out there preaching. They start arguing over doctrine. They start arguing with their wives. And the people watch all this stuff. You're there to preach um, the simplicity um, that is found in Jesus Christ. You're there to preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And if they will believe and trust in Him, they will be saved. And you're supposed to do it in, in a good demeanor or with good behavior. And if you're not doing that, you're pushing people away from the grace of That's God. That's what we're going to go into in the next video, the, uh, the proper attitude and demeanor. Okay?